Hearthstone Grand Masters. We are uh, almost into our third series of the day. We've just found out who our two players in the winners match is going to be. It's going to be Surrender up against Chonsu next before we go down to Staz versus Kin for our first Elin for our first elimination match here in the first uh, uh, A bracket, sorry, of the first top eight of this week. In case you didn't catch the recap at the start, the first three weeks of Grand Masters here are basically going to function like three individual tournaments between the Grandmasters for each region separately. The Swiss portion was played off stream the last couple of days, and now we're down to the top eight this weekend. Uh, so now, heading into this next match, Surrender versus Chonsu, I believe we have another double digits to be expected. Yeah, and the more unexpected thing, I think, is that both of these players have Warrior, and they're somewhat in the bomb variant. There's a few different difference in how the decks are tech but yeah as we've seen from previous seasons both chansu and surrender are korean players i wouldn't be surprised if they collaborated at least a little bit mm. in coming up with the lineups although surrender does have a mage whereas chansu settled on priest instead for that slot Yes, there's always some amount of crossover, it feels like, within uh, your fellow countrymen when you're playing Hearthstone, whether they want you to or not. Like me personally, I'm always stealing ideas off Ball Control and Meaty. They're always trying to get rid of me, but they <laughs> just can't do it. Not yet. Uh, and as you said, the Warriors that they both have, a little bit different from both of these players. The uh, Warrior from uh, Chonsu, uh, not necessarily more aggressive, but it does cut uh, the Shield Slams which uh, Surrender is bringing in favor of a slightly more early game uh, package. Like, for example, the Clockwork Goblins are thrown in there, uh, as well as the uh, Blood Boil Brutes, which can obviously come down nice and early for a big swing onto the board. But it does also have the uh, Plague of Wrath, so it has potentially a little bit more removal as well. So this Bomb Warrior Mirror could get pretty interesting. It definitely can. And I want to point out that there's actually a Zephyrus in the Bomb Warrior for mm. Surrender, which is a nod to, I guess, the potential of how much you can draw with cards like Battle Rage. Well, specifically Battle Rage. Yeah, Battle Rage, Shield Block thrown in there as well. And also just the fact that while it is relatively aggressive, it's much less so than the uh, No Hands Warrior, the Egg Warriors that we're seeing from a lot of the other players. This is a much more of a sort of control-ish mid-late game deck which means, uh, you know, if you're stalling out the game for ages, Zephyrus eventually has to become playable unless your opponent is also shuffling a whole lot of bombs into your deck. That then things can get pretty <laughs> awkward. Definitely throws a wrench into their plans. Uh -huh. And uh, I would say that, you know, this double Demon Hunter ban is something I expected all day. I am shocked that we got to see Illidan at all earlier on, and mm. that was at Kin's expense, sadly. Uh, but that will not be available for this series. We're also potentially going to see perhaps another demon, I sorry, Druid Mirror, which we've seen it, and I pretty much think that you only need to yeah. see it once to get an idea of how it goes in general. So it really is interesting just to see, I think, how Druid lines up against Warrior specific, which has now lost but Warpath, but still has a ton of removal. Yes, exactly. That'll definitely be an interesting matchup. And I think the go back to the Demon Hunter point, it is interesting that it has like was let open like once or twice, but has been pretty universally banned. Despite the fact that it during the Swift leave on day one, it was not the most banned deck. That was actually Warlock. But obviously we're not seeing much Warlock from a lot of these players, which I find quite surprising. I was expecting expecting to see a lot more of it. But uh maybe it's not quite so powerful in a tournament setting as it is on ladder. Yeah, perhaps not. So we are going to start off with a Bomb Warrior Mirror, and my gosh, I didn't cast that much of APAC last year, but I do remember in the weeks that I did, I was filling Oof. up my notebooks with bomb counters. <laughs> For real. Yeah, the, uh, the real blessing I feel like in now compared to previously is that there is no... Uh, Dr. Boom Mad Genius. There's no one all-powerful card that you're looking for that will massively bolster your chances of winning. Instead, this feels like uh, it's probably going to actually be a lot more aggressive, I think. Even though we have all this removal cards um, with uh, Brawl and Plague of Wrath thrown in there and the Shield Slam for Surrender, you're still... Uh, uh, you're still looking to go pretty aggressive with the bombs, I think. Yeah, I was going to say, there's no Dr. Boom that genius, but there's definitely still Blastmaster Boom, the main reason for playing the deck, and it is available 
on curve for both of the players, but as you can see by Surrender's facial expressions, and I learned so much about the game just by watching Surrender's facial expressions because he shook his head at Corsair Cash on two, so that kind of indicates to you that's probably the best thing your opponent can do on two. And going straight into Reg Caliber, he'll most likely have three bombs charged up for the boom on seven, so it's looking a bit dicey for Surrender. Actually, Surrender will get to his boom first, it just won't be charged up as much, unless he gets another bomb generator. Yeah. I mean, two in the deck is not that bad, you know, you're still getting a pretty decent amount of pressure. Yeah, and he will actually just hoard pillage, most likely, into another wrench caliber, so that's fun. And then Chansu can do the same, I'm just seeing a bunch of weapons and pirates, this reminds me of a whole different meta. <laughs> This is one of those blink and you miss it matchups, huh? So, hard villager for both of them. Surrender, he is not having it. Really not having it. Um, it's getting to the point where he doesn't want to take so much face damage anymore. Um, he could, and you know, the obvious play is to just face tank this, but he's got bombs in his deck. chansu has got two more weapon charges of his own, so I wonder if he's going to commit a shield slam here. Looks like he is. The other question is whether he wants to play Bloodsworn as for Tempo, and thank goodness Surrender is just doing everything as I'm talking about it, answering the questions immediately. Yes. So now for Chauncey, starting off with the Risky Skipper, it looks like he can draw a whole bunch of cards with this, which is exactly what you want to be doing. Obviously, it draws him closer to those bombs from his opponent, but that's not necessarily such a bad thing when Blastmaster Boom can come down on the following turn anyway. Right. So surrender, one more swing of the weapon, and boom. I, I tend to think that he would be clearing a minion with a weapon, even though it's tempting to go face, just because yep. that creates less diversions for the boom bots, because you want those all to sure. go face. Do you reckon there's any temptation here for Serena to hold on to the Blastmaster to try and go for something like Risky Skipper Blastmaster for like just a one big kind of pseudo OTK damage swing? Or should he just throw it down? I can't believe you didn't just say one big boom, but yeah, Sorry. I mean, that is something we're thinking about. I mean, there's also uh, a possibility of using Risky Skipper with Armor Smith Bloodsworn as he that saw him do good. in a different game, like just get yeah. himself out of the range and then set up his boom. If the skipper sticks, then maybe all of the boombots go off immediately. But I don't really see the merit in clearing the boombots as soon as they're played. Because it's yeah. not like Chansu on his end could flood the board so much that the booms deal with his own minions. I guess it's really just about whether you want to bother killing the skipper then. Because if there's one down, you may as well leave two down, I guess. Just does more damage to your opponent's side of the board. I am curious about holding on to the weapon, though. I guess what this sets up for Chansu is that if he has two skippers on board, if he plays one minion, they're both immediately dead. Sure. So he would have to sack one anyway. Potentially. This seems like a very complicated turn. And yeah, it looks like he is doing that. I yeah, wonder this warrior if deck. he's going for for the other men, we're just gonna see bombs fly everywhere. Oh my god, that sounds so dumb. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're not. We're oh not. my god, he's oh, doing wait, we it. Are. What? He's but, doing it. <laughs> but he didn't go for the. Okay. You needed to have one skipper on board for all of them to go off, and yeah. let's see some bombs fly, guys. I see a lot of ones and two. What the heck? What the heck? One That looks like a pretty good result for Chonsu there. Yeah. Okay, there's a bunch Wait, of ones one, and one, two. What? That did nothing! <laughs> that was a whole bunch of duds. Hello? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Chonsu now potentially is just dead on the following turn if the bombs fall in the right way now. Right, and even if he isn't, Surrender now has the opportunity to refill his board, gain a bunch of armor, and time. Um. <sighs> Blastmaster Boom has lost his mojo, man. Yeah, did somebody nerf the boom bots behind our backs? I just didn't hear that they only deal up to two damage now. <laughs> That's 
it's uh, pretty funny. I will say though that after this refill from Surrender, if he keeps drawing these somewhat useless removal spells because he's the one that's trying to be aggressive now, something like a shield yeah. slam or yeah, something like that, he could potentially give Chonsu a window to come back because Chonsu has way more threats. He definitely does, but he doesn't have any armor gain outside of the hero power at the moment, which, uh, you know, definitely means that in the next couple of turns, if he just draws those bombs, it, that's probably Surrender's best chance of taking the game. Has it come to the point where we're going to see a Tempo Zephyrus? He has to know it does nothing, right? Like, oh, there's sure. so much rush in the deck that Chonsu can throw down. Yeah. With double Restless Mummy, Cargirth, and Blood Boil, I definitely like holding there's on to it. There's one! And dodges it for now. But it's Just still about safe. one more hero power after this. So he needs to definitely not draw a bomb the next turn to just get out of the range of the next bomb. Though, yeah. Surrender has a fair amount of bombs in his deck too. I mean, I'll confess I have not been able to keep track with how fast they've been going. Right, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think it's just four in each, right? None have been drawn. Oh, no, wait. Oh, so there it's three for Chonsu now. Oh, okay. Sorry. I was having. Uh, computer wobbles that just makes it more exciting although given exactly. that surrender has a lot more cards in the deck it, it, i'm inclined to think he has more bombs but also chansu just drew more with battle rage I assume. right um so the play could be risky skipper armor smith blood sworn and then just you know sweep up as much as possible oh i that would generate so many it would make a lot bots, of bombs. though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I definitely like just ripping one bomb now, and he got the good outcome, so he could go for the um, armor gain next turn. Again, thinking about the Zephyrus, maybe you're right, there's a ton of rush minions in the deck, but at this point, it at the very least requires Chansu to commit that mana into removing it sure. if he doesn't just want to trade. The goblin straight up, and at this point for surrender, he just wants to make sure Chansu is not comfortable hero powering. Oh man, another wrench I, I, caliber. I, I, I feel like the main thing there that I would consider holding onto Zephyrus for is actually just another minion for Risky Skipper, because it's never going to be active before the game's over. I'm like fairly certain that's just not happening, but it. it I don't know, maybe it can do something here. Like you said, at least if it makes Chonsu spend the mana, that's something. That's which fair. is maybe the best he's going to get. You bring up a good point. Maybe Surrender has been lured into a somewhat false sense of security because Chonsu has not really damaged him these past few turns. But yeah. Chonsu could turn the tables and start just whacking away at Surrender's face with these re-equipped wrench calibers. And then he will be able to hero power up to six. So that is at least one bomb he can draw without immediately dying. And you know what, to be fair, Zephyrus actually did his job here. It makes it very awkward now for Chonsu. He has to go Restless Mummy or Hero Power. Um, or I actually, would take the I Hero Power guess... every time here. Yes, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely Hero Powering here. <gasps> He's reaching for the Mummy though. I mean, it's so tough to say. With number one without, I mean, sure, the players definitely have knowledge of how many bombs are left, but even with those numbers, it's hard to calculate the odds of is it better to go race and keep your Clockwork yep. Goblin on board right now? Or is it better to prevent yourself dying to a single bomb next turn? Sky Raider, Pirates with Charge. We're looking at Deck Hand, but there's no weapon. Yeah. Um, oh, I guess the best outcome would be another... Um, Honestly, uh, just something cheap. 4-2 to put the weapon back. That, that too. Or even... Just something cheap to gain more armor off of. Yeah, that's true. That's very true. Oh, sorry. The skipper will be dead by then. Your flaws are strength. Because the Sky Reader itself will be the third minion played. Yeah, yeah. It's a huge swing, though, for Surrender. And, yeah. you know, obviously what would really complete this would be a uh, Battle Rage. But even without that, it's still pretty powerful to just put him at 34 health. And, you've... and it just means that anything that sticks is so huge. And you're looking very happy here. There's the bomb. You could, again, you can learn so much about the game state simply by watching one of our favorite and most emotive players. <laughs> um, yeah, it was pretty devastating there for Chauncey. The two of the bombs came up before uh, Surrender really took any much damage whatsoever. But it does highlight the way the matchup, I think,
probably will tend to go, which is less controlly, more aggressive. You're just trying to get those pillagers down, get more and more weapons and more damage and bombs coming through as quick as possible. While it was less controlly for the most part of the game, I will say, though, that Surrender had many opportunities to drop that combo of minions to gain the armor early on, but he specifically True. held it to be able to also remove something from Chansu's side of the board. So that actually worked out very well from him for him. And uh, yeah, well played to surrender both players. I can't believe that all those boom bots just dealt one or two and almost all of them <laughs> went to minions. That's not how it works to play the card. Yeah, it was a little bit unfortunate there for Chonsu, I think. But it does mean now that Surrender uh, has won with his warrior, as you can see there. So he now has to only win with his mage uh, uh, and his druid. And if he does that, he's going to be our first player going through to the top four on Sunday. So with the druid and the mage that he has left, uh, he's going to be lining up the mage first. How does that lining up against what Chonsu has left? Well, I... Do you think that Chansu will be trying again on his warrior? And, you know, Bomb Warrior back in the day was built to try and mess with Highlander things. So I would sure. give the favor to Bomb Warrior. Um, it turns off, aside from turning off Zafiris Reno and Dragon Queen Alex Straza, the mage doesn't have a whole lot of healing. They rely on Alex Straza, which heals in bursts and yeah. pretty inveniently puts you to a multiple of five, which bombs can still <laughs> deal with. So. We'll see, but I would have to probably give this one to the warrior. Well, let's take a look. Surrender, I think, is definitely going to be looking for uh, some removal, but mainly minion threats, I would say. And Reno the Relicologist feels like a great way to do that. It's, uh, you know, both a minion on the board and killing off a whole bunch of Chonsu's stuff. So I would obviously like to see that being kept. It will be kept, but there is also Corsair Cash. And this card just makes Bomb Warrior so much more consistent because you can get, um, well, the deck is also running Ankar, but it's running two Wrench Calibers. And then playing it on two, you can play the Wrench Caliber on curve and you know try to get enough bombs in there before Reno can even go off. So with that in mind, Surrender actually tosses the Reno away been so long since I've seen a Reno Mage toss Reno. Anyway, the opening hand for mm. Chansu. Risky Skepper, I seem like, I, I feel is definitely held in hand for the stronger combos. And with the anchor drawn in hand, it guarantees that Wrench Caliber is the draw. Of course, your cash. Which, yeah, is, is probably the good one in this matchup. Like, uh, I'm kind of used to playing the other version where I really want to hit anchor off of the uh, cash. Um, but I think in this matchup, yeah, you're very, very happy to sit the Especially caliber. with this hand. My goodness, it's just like last yeah, game. Yeah, Of course, I cash wrench caliber into re-equip it into fully charged Blastmaster Boom on seven. Not to mention, you'll have several bombs in your opponent's deck, thus turning off their Zephyrus and Reno. Mm, <laughs> this could be over real soon. Yeah, I guess the main thing that uh, Surrender can try and do here is that, like you say, even though Chonsu has an incredibly powerful bomb-filled hand, uh, he doesn't have any removal yet as it currently stands outside of the weapons and I suppose the boom bots. Uh, so maybe if Surrender can find a way to stick these big minions, maybe ramp up to that Dragon Queen Alex Straza quicker, he may just be able to dominate the board for a win if Chonsu can't find a brawl. Possible and I will say that the extra charge on the wrench caliber actually makes the turn a little bit more awkward because he maybe would have wanted to play Horde Pillager, but at least he's drawn into something else to develop onto the board. Nothing that really challenges the Twilight Drake clean, but every weapon swing to Surrender's face is just putting him closer and closer to bomb range. Yeah. So Frostbolt is what stands out to me because you can freeze your opponent's face. Uh, that might not be good enough for just one turn, though. He probably wants um, to just play the Orc on this turn, right? Uh, unless the ping is looking particularly good. I wonder. Yeah, I can get behind the Orc. Kind of. I'm just looking at which is the pick here. Definitely not the box, because he's got one already. Conch calling, yeah. it seems a bit of wishful thinking to pick something worth playing conch on, so I'm very... Sure. Oh, but... Okay, I guess he's using it now. Or not. 
I guess he's just thinking his mana is kind of planned out for the next few turns, so Frostbolt probably won't fit in. Yeah, I agree. That did seem like the most uh, obvious pick. Well, but it does it does play into his plan of, uh, as I was saying, trying to go a bit more aggressive with minions. You know, if he can dominate the board, then maybe he's able to put on enough pressure to win the game. Well, there is a boom bot that does what I think it's supposed to. Go face for four. <laughs> oh, Surrender yes. was not happy to see that at all. Twilight Range also very awkwardly just out of the range of being able to value trade and then conge. Yeah, so... this is awful. Is it going to have to be Intellect to dig for something better? Oh, it's just gonna be Blizzard. Blizzard. one minion oh. feels so bad. Yeah, that feels pretty good for Chauncey. And here comes the boom. My goodness. The Warriors might yeah, just it was get just the, dream. the quickest wins of the whole day. <laughs> Let's see. Surrender, while he's uh, being sick to the side as he is so <laughs> disgusted at what's just happened, he may be able to pull this one back. We'll have to see. Coin, power of creation. There's no more damage Stegatron in the game anymore. And to be honest, I think if he's actually going to have a chance of winning the game, he's going to have to go coin Reno. Um, I'm so... thinking something like Cartooth <sighs> Defender. Maybe. Sure, yeah, okay, yeah. Um, or if he value trades into a bomb and then goes Kundra's Calling and hits. I don't even know what you can hit on four mana that's that good. What's there's Rush like Life the new, do? <laughs> there's the new Warrior card that gains armor equal to its death rattle, or does that cost five? Armor equal to its attack on death rattle? I am rattle. not sure. I think that might cost five. He is instead just going to go for clearing the seven cost yep. minion and hoping to not die. But the Deathwing combo. <laughs> oh my god, yeah, the Deathwing. That's pretty is funny. Is that just guaranteed lethal? It's, it's, it's not. pretty close, right? Is it? Wait. Um, not exactly, but it's very likely. Yeah. <laughs> You've got to go out with a flare, Chonsu. Come For on, you're sure. winning this game no matter what. Come on, <laughs> that's the whole new curve. It's Dr. Boom into Deathwing. <laughs> <laughs> the absolute nuts. And here it goes. <laughs> he has to. Okay, surrender with just a 45 degree turn instead of the full 90 degree. <laughs> and there you there have we it. Go. <laughs> four and four, making up for the low rolls on the previous game, and that's both warriors out of the way. Yeah, looking incredibly strong there. It's something that I've had kind of, uh, I've heard whisperings of that Bomb Warrior may be the way to go instead of the uh, no hands egg warrior, or maybe even some kind of a hybrid of the two. We're still figuring out warrior, I think, as a uh, Hearthstone community. Myself, not really included in that, because I suck. But the good players <laughs> yeah, are figuring it out as we go too. along. I'm definitely uh, coming <laughs> two weeks uh, we'll later, see like how an HS replay and jam, what everybody else is strong, doing. strong, with now um, both players I think having taken a cool win with their warrior. Both demon hunters having been banned as well. It means we're looking at Druid on either side. Pretty Usually similar list as well. Usually you did mention, like, priest last on one year, side, sometimes APAC can other. fall behind, but maybe now we could be the ones innovating. Uh, I, I can't hear you at the moment. I think uh, uh, we might have gone into some technical issues, so I'm just going to carry on here as the host. Uh, Okay, we're just going to... I'm not going to try and do anything because I'm completely incompetent. Instead, we're going to toss to a quick break while we try and sort out these quick technical issues. Sorry about this, everyone. We'll be right back.
We're back. Sorry about that small technical error, but we are ready to jump back into the game with both players now having won with their Warriors. They've now got Priest uh, and Druid on one side and Mage and Druid on the other side. How is it looking for both of these players heading into the rest of the match, Gia? Well, it's looking warrior-free, which is... Uh, I have <laughs> mixed feelings on that because we did just see some absolute blitzes of games a while ago, but now we're going to get into, I guess, some more meaty matchups that maybe the trains take a few... Uh, more, uh, a little bit more time today, but I think we are just going into a Druid mirror sure. now, and this is another explosive one, maybe even more so than the one with actual bombs. It may well be. We saw a very, very quick match between uh, Staz and Surrender early on. I believe that was the match that Staz was able to win in the series. Um, uh, with his very powerful Kael'thas turn. But now for both these players, I would have to say, despite the fact that Surrender has the Glowfly Swarm, which is very powerful in these early turns, Chonsu's definitely looking like he's in the driving seat. Fungal Fortunes, Coin, Innovate, Glowfly on three. That is the dream in this mirror. Um, true. Assuming that the Fungal Fortunes draws spells, which is, sure. of course, the most likely outcome. But there is a world where even if just one or two minions are are just a little bit disastrous for the amount of flies you're going to be summoning given that the yes. coin and innervate will be used first but looks like it's all spells here so that is oh. not something surrender wants to see he is laughing all the way to the bank coin glowfly or coin innervate glowfly and then he's even got fungal fortunes to redraw the cards that he expends on that play i am i am liking chonsu's situation uh, especially as Surrender, unlike some of the Druid players, we're not seeing it in all the decks, but in some of them, uh, he's not running Starfall. That is often put in as a counter in the mirror yes. to uh, counteract that early Glowfly. And also just because it's pretty good against Demon Hunter. Most of their minions have two health. When it comes to token dru Druids of any shape or form, I tend to defer to what Papa Jason is running over in the Americas region. Sure. <laughs> he's the newest uh, of the Grandmasters there. And um, I do think he is running Starfall and deemed it good enough to be in a tournament setting and predicting that there will be that many mirrors played. So um, quite unfortunate that no one in APAC has been able to bring this tech. But I will say that the one thing Surrender does happen that Chansu doesn't is the permanent ramp in the form of overgrowth. So if he does manage to somehow weather this storm of flies, he will have forest aid which is more value. Yeah, he will be looking very good. And to be fair, Chonsu doesn't have the true OTK quite yet. I believe he will be able to do 29 damage next turn because it will be 7 times 4, 20... Oh, no, wait, no, 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 it will just be lethal. Yep, ignore me, 30 damage. And Surrender, knowing that, I believe, will just be going for some type of set of removal bog beam crystal power it feels oh. very bad it feels so bad I, I i think i don't know i is it ever worth just going for the overgrowth and saying you know what you probably don't have savage raw and if you do you just win because you're in such a bad spot anyway this is my question though when you overgrowth what's your play next turn it's still gonna have to be removal right uh true but you so... can go like a uh, glowfly plus zero mana blog, bog beam plus crystal okay. merchant and then if they didn't have a buff on this turn then you know you've only take uh, only uh, you've only <laughs> taken 14 damage no big deal yeah 14. rush it off just half your life if you hero powers but you know i'm getting behind that it just seems like it's such a losing play to have to expend removal here without developing anything else without ramping up so this is just gonna be one of those quick games and Four times seven, 28, plus the two from face. That's lethal. Yep. What a game. Could even go innervate hero power for the one over, the extra BM. Checking the math once and twice. But I wonder how Surrender is going to react seeing that Chansu did not play this immediately. <laughs> 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 We got the 90 degree turn and the slope. Yeah, We've that seen is like all a, the levels of surrender here. That's an 8 out of 10, I'd say, on the surrender scale in okay. terms of saltiness. <laughs> and somewhat deservedly so. Chonsu did get the absolute perfect hand. I don't think it's possible to have a better game in the mirror than that.
and it does mean he goes up to a very quick 2-1 lead. Once again, the winner of this match will be going through to fight on Sunday in the top four. And uh, if you win the tournament this weekend, week one of Grandmasters, you're looking at six points, which puts you at a very, very strong advantage when we head into the round robin. But Surrender is not out yet, of course. He simply falls to the lower bracket, where he will be facing the winner of Staz and Kin, which is the next match we're going to be into. And I just want to make a note that if Surrender has his scale of salty faces, I would say Chansu has a scale of smug faces as well. I, I love watching them both, because not that Chansu is a very emotive player, but when things go yeah. his way, you can definitely tell he's having the, he's having the time of his life. Absolutely. But uh, the there's still some hope for Surrender now. If he can target this Priest from Chonsu, then he is not out of the running in this top bracket just yet. Uh, and to be fair, if you're going to target anything, I feel like Priest is one of the decks you're going to have a good chance of doing so. It was looking incredibly weak for Kin earlier on in today's broadcast. Uh, obviously, he lost a mirror to Chonsu. So Chonsu has gone 1-0 and on broadcast so far with his Priest. Uh, but we'll have to see if it can stand up against the might of the Druid, because I have a feeling that despite all the strong removal that uh, the Priest has access to, it might just not come quickly enough. They might not draw their deck fast enough to find those removal spells before the Druid kills them. Sorry, did Kin not go 0-3 with the Priest? Or... He did go 0-3, is that uh, not what I said? Oh, sorry. I might have missed Sorry, that's what, I, that's what I meant anyway. if I didn't say that. In any case, it will just be this matchup again, which we saw, which the Druid did generally have a leg up because Priest doesn't have the AoE every single turn. Yep. And Surrender has the ramp, maybe not quite the Fungal Fortunes yet, which is what he really wants to see, but even if that doesn't get into hand, he still has the plan B of going for draw with Overflow. But it always feels kind of bad when you have to pay the full seven mana to play that. His Druid can cheat that so many times. However, for Chonsu, he's got a pretty nice combo here with Archmage Vargoth into Grave Rune. Yeah. Um, it's uh, not necessarily guaranteed to work, of, uh, of course, because uh, Surrender has the opportunity to kill it, which he does have the cards in hand to do so. Uh, but he might have to like expend a coin or an innovate on the same turn if he wants to get all that done. There is the possibility of just coining the overgrowth now. Um, True. And then I don't believe he would have to um, use the innervate to clear it on the following turn. Yep. Free of that blasted tower. Behold. So, Surrender definitely did not want to see that, but I think, I think he's in a spot. It probably involves using bog bean for full mana but it's it's good maybe just delay one turn on the overflow but oh he's actually leaving it up to be fair it's wow. probably exactly just grave rune that is the punish for leaving Vargoth on with nothing else having died but yeah it's just focusing on his own game plan but it is pretty punishing uh i don't know we'll have to see because obviously this is uh you know gonna be Potentially, this is a lot of board presence. But to be honest, the Druid doesn't really care that much. It's just one two six at the moment, which means it can only clear up one two two that the Surrender generates. Of course, as a singular minion, it's not a big threat. But the scary thing is that if there's a Holy Nova in hand that can suddenly go through sure. high health, or sorry, buffed glow, or even glowfly with Soul of the Forest, um, yes, so sorry, I forgot because as a singular card, Vargos is a 2-6. <laughs> of course, just like Altruist is a 3-mana three 3-2. Three exactly. So, um, what hmm. is the first order of bit for Surrender here? Uh, my first instinct is to just jam his first board, Glowfly, plus Power of the Wild. Agreed. But he's actually choosing to draw instead. Because I think knowing that if there is one AoE, there is two AoE. There are two AoEs just by virtue of Vargoth. So how much does the Power sure. of the Wild immediate buff actually do? That makes sense. And this is something that you can do if you feel confident in the number of boards that you can generate, is just let them be cleared time after time. And then as soon as one does stick, then you buff and you go for the lethal straight away, which seems smart. Mm -hmm. 
And it absolutely would have been just a waste of the power of wild if he used it here. So great call. Mm. From oh, surrender. Actually I wonder should he have even healed his minion there? Because Breath of the Infinite could have been used to kill off his own Vargoth there, which would have meant six Vargoths on the board, and then he could have traded into anything surrender generates. Is it actually six? I didn't get to do them. Oh. Um, because he, he played Grave... Oh, no, sorry. It's, uh, it would have been four, four right? Sorry. Right, yeah, four. right. Sorry, yes. But yeah, four Vargoths definitely sounds better than one, two, ones. So right. I'm quite curious about that as well, especially given that Druid doesn't have much indirect removal of their own. Yeah, there's no way they're killing them. I mean, I get that it's overall more value, but... Uh... I don't know, I think having like a wider a board there. Does it? Yeah, exactly. You just want to be able to clear. And Plague of Death will clear off everything no matter what, whether it's Death Rattle or normal Vargoth. Well, maybe a missed opportunity for Chansu there, but for now, uh, it seems like he's, well, obviously still really healthy, but the following turn could be a bit of a question mark if only Surrender had one of those board refills. He did not have Forest Aid or the second Glowfly Swarm here, or even Exotic Mount Cellar. So Chansu yeah. will not have to like t take in these awkward 7 and 8 mana turns, maybe even roll to Plague of Death. Wow, he's playing a lot of cards here. I've got to be honest, I was kind of expecting on that turn something to the tune of like Crystal Power into Heal the Vargoth and then Wrath for 1 to draw, um, just Heal to keep the, the cycle going. Yeah, that's very interesting. Just because you don't want the Vargoth to die as Surrender, I don't think. Yeah. So for Chansu here, is it just going to be a penance and pass? This does not seem worth using a Holy Nova for. But he could have done something really like put all the four Vargoths on board and then Holy Nova. Um, this is a weird pan out. Really is. Uh, Surrender, I think, still will be unable to clear off all the Vargoths, so there's not really any point popping it at the moment, I don't think. Instead, just, yeah, just going with the draw. And he just gets removal after removal when there's the minion he least wants to remove ever on board. Yeah, I know. That's... It's like an escort mission. Those really annoying missions in games <laughs> where you have to keep it alive at all costs, even though it keeps just trying to die. Exactly. All of those annoying NPCs. Yeah, I know. Oh my god, is it getting so desperate that he's just gonna gift of the wild two minions, push him face, and hope that there's no AoE? Oh. I don't know! It's getting to that point where yeah, if there's sure, not sure, Holy sure. Nova now, then surely there will be Plague of Death on 9. And at that point, there's just kind of out of it. Oh, this feels so bad for Surrender, but I completely respect the play. The Shadow Word Ruin and Chill for Chonsu. And he's finally going to pop this. I think he's realized now that four is better than one. And go back to all of this just being a result of <laughs> Surrender's decision. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is quite funny. Vargoth's yeah. just having an absolute Vargoth party there. Smoke and mirrors everywhere. <laughs> Vargoth. I mean, we can pin this all back to that decision you made to go for. You made to go for overflow instead yeah. of the removal, but it is definitely not an outright mistake because the I, the grave rune I believe is just okay. It is a two of in the deck. Other lists just from one, but then in most cases of Hearthstone, it is just better to advance your own can rather than playing around something specific from your opponent. It Generally, is tough to say, yes. though. And I guess, uh, you know, when you think about it as well, um, it's not like if you deal with the Vargoth, they have no answer to play uh, to Soul of the Forest at all, right. because there's still Plague of Death later on that can completely ruin your game plan. And on the... Okay, <laughs> this is just getting funny, you know? It's like watching <laughs> Shudder walk and all over again. Um, but yeah, on the flip side of what you said, just because you leave Vargoth up doesn't even mean they have the AoE they need on time. Yeah, Maybe they're just exactly. doubling penances or something. But 
is generally not good enough. So it had to be this perfect cocktail of Chansu having the great room for the Vargoth and Surrender not having the refill on time. The Exon Cellar came way too late. Yeah. Zixor into Panther is not bad at all. Chansu does need to have a little bit of a think here about how he approaches this. Um, it could just be mass resurrection into a board full of Vargoth. <laughs> I'm sorry, this is sure. quite funny. <laughs> oh my god. And he can, like, renew. What if you just renew instead and then discover a whole bunch of spells? 50% chance of that happening. Behold! Behold! This is just like <laughs> Luna. This is the new Luna. Instead of the tools of creation, you just behold, period. Just behold. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, but... <laughs> that is the final salt in the wound. There goes oh Kale. That's the one real chance that Surrender had of pulling things back, I think, just went out the window. It is. And um, I did mistakenly call Surrender's loss a little bit too early a while ago during the break. Uh, but unfortunately, it, for him, it did come true and he will eventually have to face either Staz or Kale. <laughs> <laughs> Six or Prime, the Sorry. other chance he maybe had. Out the window, Surrender unfortunately loses in quite a comedic fashion to Chonsu, but more than anything, losing to Vogue. Well, I, I'm losing it too. That game was something else. <laughs> oh man. Um, that really was special. Uh, good for Surrender that he will have a bit of time to regroup because if I were him, I would have to do a lot of washing on the wounds <laughs> to get all the salt out. Um, but yeah, it will just be Chansu moving on to Sunday, guaranteed, where he will play three other players for the chance to get the top prize of six points. That's exactly right. Let's take a look at the bracket, why don't we, to see uh, in a moment, to see what the uh, the rest of the group is going to be looking like. Because like you said, Surrender now drops down to the second elimination match that we'll be playing, or the decider match that we'll be playing a little bit later on today. Uh, but first of all, we're going to have to have our match between Kin and Staz, one of whom sadly will be kicked out of the standings for this week. Obviously, all the players who don't make it through to the top four on Sunday will still be back next week for an entirely new round of Swiss. Uh, fear not. And you'll be able to see all of your favorite grandmasters that didn't make it into the top eight. Hopefully, they'll make it into the top eight next time where you will we'll be able to see them play. Uh, but congratulations to Chonsu. He is a player who had a very, very strong running in last season in 2019 Hearthstone Grandmasters. And it looks like he's following that up very well here with his somewhat standard, but also somewhat different lineup. You know, Demon Hunter and Druid, you're very much expecting to see. But the Bomb Warrior and the Priest, I think, are a little bit more of his own spin on the lineup. Definitely. And the Priest, we see underperformed for Kin. I'm not sure if it's more of a matter of the lineup it was mm. paired with or the specific tech choices. But Chansu seemed to have found the perfect formula for this week. And I expect yeah. that for anybody who has been tuning in to APAC so far, we're going to be see seeing a whole lot more of Bomb Warrior on ladder in <laughs> tournaments everywhere. We have just unleashed a beast onto Hearthstone in general. We'll have to see. Because we're the first to be broadcasters, we can claim that Asia Pacific was also the first <laughs> to come up with this list. That's just how it That's works. How logic Stop works. trying to question it. Exactly. It's earlier on. It's almost tomorrow. So they created it in the future, if you don't think about it at all. Brackets ready. We're going to see how the rest of this group is shaking out before we head into our next match of the 